The eighth episode of The X-Files aired on November 5th, 1993, more than 10 years after the release of John Carpenter's horror film, The Thing. Both were inspired by the novel, Who Goes There, by John Campbell, and deal with a creature unleashed in a remote facility in the Arctic. Both also tackle similar themes of trust and isolationism, presenting the possibility that you may not know the identity of your closest friends, as well as your own. But aside from a major 10-year difference, they also differ in one other way. One received more critical acclaim than the other. Care to take a guess? Critics praised the tense atmosphere and the chemistry between the two leads David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. John Carpenter's The Thing, however, was met with much more criticism, ironically being compared to the success of Spielberg's E.T. at the time. It only grew to acclaim as a cult film, and has been re in recent years. However, this also presents itself with a weird stance as the episode we are talking about today, Ice, deals with a very similar plot. The episode starts off with a group of researchers being found dead in an Arctic research facility. Scully and Mulder soon fly out with a team to investigate the gruesome crime scene and find out what really happened up there. They soon find that the people were infected with a parasite that could be of extraterrestrial origin, and has already infected one of their own. To prevent the next global pandemic, they quarantine themselves and work to find a way to combat the parasite. This soon builds towards a massive mistrust in the team dynamic and causes everyone to look over their own shoulder. It's not too soon that people start dying off, and suspicion arises that more can be infected. Fights start to break out, and Mulder is kept in solitude, with many believing that he is the one infected. Sully soon makes a massive discovery, though, and samples everyone, allowing them to kill off all the parasites that were collected. When they return home, the last of the infected is transferred to the ICU, as the rest are cleared. Mulder and Scully also find that the research base was incinerated not long after they left. They conclude that it is better to leave what knowledge they can find in the Arctic, and pray that the creature can never reach civilization. As I stated earlier, this episode was very well received when it was first released, and it's really easy to see why. The company and Anderson, of course, knock it out of the park again. They really have a sense of who their characters are by now, and quickly slip into them with ease. They also added some nice chemistry and friction, adding to the tension of the situation, as well as the supporting cast. Xander Berkeley and Felicity Huffman do an excellent job adding some nice contrast to Mulder and Scully, while simultaneously adding to the suspense as well. This episode was penned by Glenn Morgan and James Wong, who previously penned the episode Squeeze and Shadows. They clearly show they have a way of keeping tensions high while keeping the pacing tight and sharp. This episode was also the first to be directed by David Nutter, and he does a fantastic job at visualizing the cold of the Arctic while keeping the terror within the confines of the airbase. The lighting and atmosphere was always on point, keeping me guessing throughout as to who was really infected. With all that said, though, it's hard to watch this and not compare it to John Carpenter's The Thing. Because of this, it can't help but make the episode feel, if even a little, inferior when compared to that film. But even with that said, this episode still boasts terrific acting from its two leads, as well as its supporting cast. It also features great effects for the monster of the week, and creates a chilling atmosphere that keeps you on your toes throughout the whole episode. On the grading scale, I'm going to award Ice a B+. I highly recommend checking out this episode and watching it in the dark on a cold winter night. Thank you for tuning in to this review, and I hope to catch you at the next one. Take care for now, and as always, remember to watch the skies above.